so the design of the Boeing aircraft in Europe uh, is EASA, European Aviation Safety Agency, uh, which is responsible for the certification of the Airbus aircraft. So we're trying to cover this uh, till half past 11, then we can stop the class after that. Um, learning outcome, what expected from you, you are able to understand the concept of the structure, design, and able to, to understand there is the requirement, is there is there are design requirements, which you need to comply to follow for you to be able to have your repair be approved by the authority, and all also, you are able to understand there is organization which will be your future employer, which is design organization approval, or they call it uh, part 21 sub part J organization. Uh, and also, we you are able to understand how to deal, who to deal with in terms of getting the approval, uh, which authority for what product to which authority and also briefly how you are able to get it from the uh, CM. Okay. Let's look at the structure classification. And we have a uh, need to understand there is primary structure and secondary you have to select the strength or the material that you use for the repair and there is option for you whether you are looking at the material for the primary structure uh, used to repair primary structure or you looking for the material for the secondary structure so you need to understand what is primary structure what is secondary structure because you need also to choose the material for the doubler based on your understanding on the structure classification. So primary structure is structure significantly carry the load flight ground, whatever load that on the aircraft. If this primary structure fail, the aircraft structure will totally fail. You may even lose the aircraft. So that is the first thinking. The first thing key is looking at the structure. The structure is primary, structure is important. The structure, if damaged, it can cause, you can even lose the aircraft. So that is the thinking. Secondary structure, the structure which is does not directly affect the aircraft total structure strength. You may looking at the doors. The, the inspection panel, uh, looking at uh, landing gear doors. If we crack the landing gear doors, it's not pressurized, uh, the aircraft still fly. But if you damage the hinge of the door, that is a problem. Your door may be detached from the aircraft, may hit other part of the aircraft. That could still be considered as primary structure. Not the whole door, the hinge of the door could be the primary structure because that door, if it get loose, it may hit other part of the aircraft and worse, it may hit the control surfaces, then you will have problem in handling the aircraft. So that is the thinking. So you just come to the thinking. You can read and read this information here, but I'm explaining uh, to you the 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 layman term or the easiest way to uh, uh, the easiest way to understand these two uh, terminologies any questions okay second you need to understand the design philosophy the structure is the design to be safe life or fatigue design okay 
primarily the structure must be designed to fatigue. Fatigue means the structure will fail after certain time. After certain cycle, certain flight hours, the structure will fail. It is common for anything. It's even us will fail after we have reached certain age. After we reach certain stress, you may fail. So this is nature. You can see even the house structure fail, the bridge structure fail, whatever structure that you see around the world fails after certain time of operation. So that is fatigue. You need, if you go to the dictionary, you find the word fatigue. Fatigue is after repeated use. Failure after repeated use. Repeated use. So there is a two design concept. Safe life. Damage tolerance. Safe life is very simple. If you have a piece of structure, you put the load, you test it, the structure fail after certain cycle, that cycle recorded as the age of the structure. Simple, eh? You apply the load, the structure is trapped. You apply the load repeatedly and the structure fail after how many cycle of loading? That cycle each of the structure. Of example, is 12,000 hours. After 12,000 hours, it is expected the structure to fail. You have to retire the aircraft or remove the wing, replace with the new wing. When I was doing the Eagle, the wing, the aircraft life, wing life is 10,000 hours. After 10,000 hours, we need to retire the aircraft. Or for certain aircraft who are able, who have the provision that you change the structure, you have to do the structure change. For example, the C-130, we can change the whole wing. They call it re-wing program. It requires a lot of technical service engineer with the discipline and structure. That's why I said uh, this knowledge here is very good because uh, actually, it will uh, be a good uh, opportunity for you to be technical service engineer structure, which are really, which are highly in demand. So that is safe life. We did uh, replace the center wing or the C130 several times at error. It's a one error is one of the center around the world, one of the best center around, around the world in maintaining the C130 because we also have the capability to change the whole wing after the wing reaching its safe life. The C-130 was designed in 1950. The first model came out in 1958. It was no damage tolerant design concept. We used uh, been used or been thought of in 1960s, so much later. After they find out that just uh, throwing out things, remove things, replace things, after reaching the life, the structure still looks good, no failure, it was wasted, then the thinking uh, they should not use that. And we use that kind of philosophy, just putting life on the parts and component. Even though the part is not damaged, we have to throw them or replace them. It's not economical. So we are, they are coming up with the thinking of damage tolerant. Damage tolerant concept means that there is damage, you still safe. Okay. If you want to, and want to explain this damage tolerance you have damage the structure is still safe you punch the fuse large if i have shown you on the earliest example the aircraft still flying back to base 
You can see the Aloha Air 737, the top part of your slash rip off. The aircraft flew back to airport safely. Only one of the crew was sucked out because he was not belted. He was serving the passenger as the top part of the fuselage blew off. He was also thrown out of the aircraft. Only that one crew, cabin crew, the rest are safe on their seat. So it means that after that severe damage, the aircraft still able to land back to the airport not land back to their own airport, proceed with the flight and landed to other airport, landed at their intended destination. So damage tolerance. So damage tolerance has two concepts. One is fail safe. The other one is slow crack propagation. Fail safe is either you have designed it to stop the crack, to stop the failure, or it is multiple load path. So for the crack stopper, if you have crack, the crack will stop at the crack stopper. So you design the multiple load path, you have two or three uh, loading, you have to two or three structure parts. If you lose one, you still have the two. Bracket, for example, you can see bracket with three lock, three fitting lock. So mean if you break one of the lock, the other two still take over. I was still able to carry the load. I was working on the C-130 at the road. I have we seen the experience of they have four engine mount. The one engine mount totally cut off. The aircraft still able to flew from Kuantan to Subang. And we did not know one of the uh, engine mount has totally severed. So that is fail safe multiple load pass four engine mount lost one you have three able to carry the load the crack stopper just like you see the the aircraft and the earlier picture the punctured from fuel station uh, 628 to 727 the aircraft flew safely back to the airport and because the crack, the crack you can see the crack earlier in the photo stop at the frame so the frame act at the as the crack stopper so that is fair safe fair safe philosophy the aircraft structure has been designed to be redundant if you lost one part of the structure you still be able to carry the load and expectedly when you do an inspection you saw the damage and you replace so you bring back the aircraft structure back to normal condition if you, for example, again, we have a lock, three fitting lock, you fail one, you saw it, there was a failure, you replace it in the aircraft back to the original condition. Similarly, that I was working on the C-130, we found one of the engine mount totally severed, then we go replace the engine mount, we have back with four engine mount, and then we release the aircraft, the aircraft flew back safely to Kuantan. So that is fair safe. For the slow grade propagation, we use a lot of fracture mechanics. It was a study, they call it fracture mechanics. Fracture mechanics study is it's not difficult. What we do is we analyze, analyze the growth of the crack. How long a crack, what we need here, we need to assume all part having very small crack, 0 0.005 of an inch. And any part, even though it looks good to us, it is crack. And with that number, with that dimension, with that 0 0.005 inch crack, we do the analysis, we grow the crack based on the load and stress applied to the parts. And we determine when, oh, and how long, how many cycles the crack will grow into unsafe condition. The unsafe condition, they call it uh, the critical crack length. So how long the crack grow into the critical crack length and we establish the inspection program beyond the 
critical crack line, not beyond, before the critical crack line. So hopefully we already see the crack and we, when we see the crack, we repair or replace the structure. So the aircraft back to normal. So those are damage tolerant design principle with the slow crack propagation. Uh, how we need to understand this fatigue? Because we can see if you look at, if you search for S and curve, stress and cycle curve that you see here, you have this kind of curve for every material in the world. The scientist has done the study. They have tested thousands of specimen and the specimen in terms of stress and cycle behave in this way. And then obviously it will behave as you have higher stress, the life cycle is lower. As you reduce the stress, you go down this level, then you can see the life can be very long. Or if you even put it very low, near 40 only in this situation, the life cycle could be go as forever. So that is how the structure material. This are how that is this is how the material behaves. So you can see some example here the crack stopper, how they design a crack stopper. So this is example of the structure. Structure being repair. Damage tolerant. Like I say again, we assume there is a small crack 0 0.005 or an inch of each part and component. In this situation, we consider this crack in the reverse hole. The aloha accident is because of this crack grow from hole to hole unnoticed. The structure was done at night in the dark as we learn about the Swiss cheese theory that is accident not caused by single event because of multiple events. So the aircraft is the aircraft been flying heavily. They only have rest at night. They bring the aircraft into the hangar at night. The light is poor and they are not able to see the scratch and they flying it. And that's why you can see the top part of it just disappear in flight. So for us, for some of our friends asking about uh, multiple delays doubler earlier, that is because of this uh, damage tolerant design philosophy. And you can see here in analysis, we do the analysis, we do the uh, fracture mechanic analysis, and we try to we calculate the design life, how many cycle, and we also determine how much crack will be growing. What is the rate of grow, uh, crack grow, and how fast it grow, and when it become critical. So we always uh, come down to about 50 flight less in the cycle, then we do inspection here. So this is inspection. You can see the manual, across structure manual, or the maintenance program of the aircraft. And then you can see inspection requirement for structure and most of the inspection requirement for structure came up from this fracture mechanic analysis. Okay, critical grade line. Okay, enough on that. So for the, okay, any question on the, um, any question? I will stop first. Okay, if no question, let me continue.
Okay, uh, let me continue. Uh, for you, uh, okay, for us, we need to understand there is Malaysian Civil Aviation Regulation 2016. It's low in loading. Civil Aviation Regulation 216. If you refer to regulation 25, uh, first we see the one in Bahasa because this is the official one. Menerima pakai kod kelayakan terbang. And if you look at the in English, twenty five, we pass it already. Adoption of Awareness Code. The Director General may adopt Awareness Codes from any contracting state as the National Awareness Code with such modification as he thinks fit. So when you did the design, you have to comply to the evidence requirement. You, ju you just don't simply design as you like because again the aircraft is designed to a set of requirement and uh, then you need to ensure when you do your repair design you are able to show compliance you are able to comply with this evidence requirement let me take one of it uh, let's go for example far part 25 this is evidence requirement for the Airbus for the Boeing aircraft. Okay. You see my page or you just losing it? You see it here. Okay, you see here. Part 25 Awareness Standard Transport Category Airplane. Uh, this is used to design Boeing aircraft. Aircraft are designed to this requirement. And you can see here sub part A general, sub part B flight performance of the aircraft. Sub part C is the structure. Sub part D is design in construction. Sub part E is aircraft power plant. Sub part F is aircraft equipment or the avionics electrical system under sub part F. And sub part G is the documents. Okay. Operating limitation information, documents or the manuals, the flat manuals, everything, marking placards on the aircraft. It's not simply we put it there as we like because there are requirements you have to put it there. Then we have LEVs. So now our interest aircraft structure is sub part C and D because sub part C has very detailed requirement for the structure. When you do design of the structure repair, you must comply to sub part C. Not all, but most of it. For example, load. We have to determine the load. What is the load that has lost and what is the load that you Able, you wanted to restore factor safety. Factor safety is 1.5, it's mandatory for you to design the such a repair. The factor of safety in your design is 1.5. Strength and deformation, pro structure. Okay, and this uh, flight load may, may, may not be applicable because you're not doing new design. Uh, ground load, water load, fatigue evaluation, 25571, damage tolerance and fatigue evaluation. So you must make sure you have done the fatigue analysis on your design. 
However, if you work for the technical services of the aircraft, Airbus uh, or Airbus or Boeing, either for our airlines, MAS or AICR, and they know that you do not have the capability doing this analysis. So this fatigue and damage tolerance will be done by OEM. They will come back to you with their analysis on your repair. You don't have to do it yourself. However, you need to understand how they were doing it. Because later on when the, the report came on the damage tolerance and fatigue analysis, they will come back with the report and they will come back with the inspection interval. Remember, we have to calculate the inspection interval based on the mechanics. When you got this information, you have to translate to the maintenance program of the aircraft. Lightning protections. Okay. Design of construction. Material. What material you use to do the repair? You use the same material. You're not using different material because you do not want dissimilar metal. Why? Because you will have corrosion. So what is the requirement of you choosing the material? It is in the 25603. Fabrication method. How you cut, how you grind. Fastener. What kind of fastener you install? Protection structure. Why you... That's this protection structure required to do. Prime painting. Apply allodyne in your repair. SSB provision, your repair should not cover any provision for inspection currently on the aircraft. Material strength, special factor, casting, bearing, everything is here. Auto surfaces, you're not covering that. So this is what I'm just trying to show you briefly. When you do things, when you do the repair of the design, you, when you design the repair of the aircraft structure, okay, design of repair. The structure is defect, you need to repair it, you need someone to design the repair. You are the one because you are the engineer. The mechanic will do the repair based on the available information. Maybe the information available from the CRM is such a repair manual. So you just pick the information and do the repair. They don't have to come to you because the repair is already there. But the, if the repair is not there, then you have to design it. Someone has to design the repair to tell the mechanic how to repair it. That is your job. When you design the repair, you must make sure you comply to the design requirement. It, it, it is in here. Okay. Any questions? Okay. No question. Let me swap back to the slide. What is it? Oh, okay. Can you see back the slide? Okay. Or you not? Yes, Okay, so this slide, is the, this slide is the process. What do we do first? We do first product spec. What is product spec? It's a conceptual design. You have a sketch, say you have cut the defect off, say 3 by 3 inch. Then you install doubler, say 6 by 6 inch. You put three rivets all around. And you do all the sketching or the requirement for edge distance, pitch distance, material type, type or reverse. All those details has been put it. You have sketched it. That is concept. Concept repair. The, the concept repair, the defect, you cut off, you put the doubler. The self doubler, the material, the selection of the fastener, those uh, put down on those on detail in your sketch. That is concept. However, that sketch will not be approved until you determine what are the airworthiness requirements affected by that defect and by the repair. Obviously, you have seen the airworthiness requirement. One of it that you can easily pick up the factor of safety. So the repair that you have shown, you have developed as concept, must comply, must meet the factor of safety 1.5. And you must have protected the repair. So you must make sure you have spell out the protection requirement, the painting, the prime. And the repair must have enough strength. You have to do the stress analysis. You have to do the stress check. What are the stress on the doubler? And how long the and uh, what is the strength of the doubler? And you are you able to recover or restore the strength which has has been lost? 
due to defect and you have to you have to cut it off. You have cut off the defect. Why you need to cut the defect? Just imagine that someone got cancer. Someone got cancer, uh, for, example, for example, that's why you can see some people, they have amputated. They cut off their leg, they cut off whatever piece of their bone, they both remove the cancer because the defect can grow. The corrosion can grow, the crack can grow. So you have to remove them and repair. Okay. Similarly, also in our body, if we got cancer, sometimes they cut off the bone and then replace another bone, they splice. Same thing. It's nature. Okay, now after you have the department, you can go to the detail design. The detail design will explain everything. Then the detail design, you have to do the analysis. Whether the strengths are there, factor safety are there, you have to do the analysis. And you have to show that you comply to the requirement. You have to verify you comply to the requirement. Then you declare the compliance. And if you having the approval, to approve the repair, then you just issue the approval, the repair is approved under your organization. If not, you have to go to the authority to ask for the approval. Authority may say, can have you consulted the OEM? Because you do not have the approval, you may not be having the full competency in design the repair. So the authority wanted some assurance your repair is good. So that's why you have to go back to the OEM to ask for the concession, to ask for the approval, to ask for the acceptance and the repair. That's why I go back to the earlier uh, lecture, which I'm saying that you have to have a good report of the defect and you have to fill up the, the check sheet of the defect inspection and you have to write a memo, explain it in detail, detail as well as you have to have a sketch of the defect with a local and global view. By having that, by sending those information to OEM, OEM may come back whether to, if you don't have any capability to do the repair, they will come out with the repair design. If you do have the capability, but you are not competent enough, they will review the repair, give you certain suggestion, and you, they can accept the repair. Those are the one you have to submit to authority for authority to approve. The approval for installation is only by the state of registry where the aircraft has been registered. If you're working for an aircraft registered in Indonesia, but you're working for MRO, AROD, for example, you're working for AROD, the aircraft registered in Indonesia, you do all the analysis, you do all the, uh, the, the design requirement here, and then you have to submit to Indonesian authority for them. So, but the process flow, this is shown here in the chart. Any questions? No. Okay. Oh, question, okay. Yeah. Ah, so uh, like you said, uh, Arad, uh, they have uh, separate the uh, approval then, uh, other than uh, A again, Arad Aerospace. The. Ah. Okay. Arad having two uh, entity. Yeah. First, they are having the approval to work on the military aircraft. Uh -huh. And they also have the approval to work on civilian aircraft. So the military aircraft approval issued by the DGTA, Director General of Technical Airworthiness of the military. Okay. Uh -huh. Or state aircraft operator, state aircraft authority. For uh -huh. the other one is approved by the CA. For uh -huh. the civil is approved by the CAM. Yes, uh -huh. two approval. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, Prof, questions. Uh, let's say for for the civilian side, let's mm. say uh, they don't the workshop they, they they don't have the approvals and the capability to take uh, like uh, macam a component to repair tau, macam, uh, for mm. structure. Eh. So can they mm. use the aerot military punya approval? Cannot. 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 Only facility with the approval. If it is similarly, if you don't have the capability to do the military, you don't have approval for it, you can, cannot go to civilian. Similarly, if you don't have the approval for civilian, you cannot go to military because approval is the legal, legal binded. You only 
can do whatever in the in the in the what I call it whatever privilege is given. You have you need to have the approval because you need a privilege. Just 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 like driving license, driving license is license is a license. You have given the license when they found out you have the competency to drive a car. Okay, what is the license for? The license for is a privilege. The license is evident that you had the privilege to drive the car on the road. It's why you don't bring the license. The police will just get you or summon you because you do not have the privilege to be on the road. Similarly, the approval. Any approval is a privilege. Okay. Certificate is approval. Your degree, your degree is not privilege. Your degree is just, uh, your degree is the, uh, it's just uh, information for others saying that you have gone through the courses which is approved. The courses is approved. You have completed it. But you don't have privilege. That's why you need to have the LAE license to work on the aircraft. That's why you have to have PNs to work on the design of the aircraft. Those PNs, those LE, those are privileged, license. The license comes with the privilege. Clear? Uh, That's why people asking after work, after you completed your degree, you cannot get a job. Yes, because you do not have any privilege. Only tell that you have completed the program. However, if you go for license, uh, this year, this year, issue your license, you have the privilege. The privilege, they pay you because of your privilege. Okay, you got salary paid because of the privilege. If you're PN, you have the privilege to sign off the design. And people employ you because you have that privilege. Yeah? Okay? That's why now we have to look for competency because competency license come with the privilege. Now there's a drone pilot, so I'm digress a bit. Drone. Drone, now you have to be trained under the pilot, drone pilot school. Drone now is a drone pilot now to be licensed. Okay, once you got the drone pilot license, mean you had the privilege to fly the drone, or else you'll be penalized. You'll be prosecuted. Because you do not have the privilege. You must have the privilege. Okay, clear. Now, this is the process. Any more questions? This is must be very clear with you because this is what happened out there. You have to understand this for you to be able to work, be able to get a job during interview. You understand, you'll be able to answer this question then you are, you inshallah, you get a job. Okay. Now, who are doing this? This is the authority, this is the design requirement. So this is from the sailplane, and you can see on the left was EASA, and the right is the FAA. The number is almost, almost identical. In fact, the content also almost identical. If you work for helicopters, small helicopters, is CS27 or FAR 27 Large helicopters like MHS, like Awan Inspirasi, like Westar, having large helicopters, you work on CH29 or FR Part 29. They also have similar uh, sub, uh, sub chapter, they have structure, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, all the same. The title also the same, only the, the structure, philosophy, design are the same. The only thing is the detail design is a bit different. So the structure can be used throughout 22, 23, 25, 27, 29. In fact, to the balloon, in fact, to the engine, the propeller, all structures because every of the CSFAR, there is subpart C and subpart D. None of this not having subpart C and subpart D. So the structure is always there. Okay, this is up A, C, this is a content again, as I, I have shown you, I believe you now understand this uh, subparts. Subpart. Okay, next one. So, you design the repair. You need to get the repair be approved, just like I said. 
or you may approve the repair itself if you have given the privilege you have the competency you apply for the approval to approve the repair it's not given to a person the approval to approve the repair is given to an organization the organization we call it design organization approval so why you get it it is in the uh, requirement in the wait huh? we go to awareness we go to notices and then you go to 8401 okay. design organization approval you see the page okay notice 8401 design organization approval your company wanted to have the privilege to approve the minor design repair okay design or repair in the category of minor you apply using this requirement this is legislation so design action approval CM part 21 sub part J, which has been cut and paste from Yasa part 21 sub part J. The knowledge of you in this requirement can be used also for you to apply the Yasa part 21 sub part J. If you have part 21 sub part J, Yasa approval, mean that you have the privilege to design approved minor repair for European registered aircraft and other authority except thing yasa uh, releases okay now we go back to we go back to the slide we have here this is ideal situation ideal organization the organization should have ceo should have head of design organization uh, design project function evidence function independent monitoring function so these are the key people or we call it post orders and I pray for you one of these days, you could be one of these. Maybe you have money, you design, you, you develop your own design organization. Maybe you are, you already have the experience, you apply to be head of design hodo. And maybe you have, you become a witness, independent monitoring and, and design. So this is a typical uh, setup organization for DOA. And there are a few DOA in Malaysia. We have MAS, we have Malindo, uh, there is uh, AASIA, DOA, and a few others. So it's it quite some. There are also EASA, EOA in Malaysia, one or two. Okay, this is another setup. I don't want to go into the detail, but I, this is the ideal setup. This is a ideal situation. But here it's not ideal. They may use uh, the setup against their their own company uh, company philosophy company operation means that this idea but sometimes not so ideal you can set the audio around your company uh, uh, philosophy around your company setup it's okay and it's okay uh, provided we have all uh, functions here ceo hodo design everything else in independent monitoring. How you want to set up, that is up to you. As long as you have those functions, it will be acceptable. Okay, next is looking authority. Who we have to deal with? I don't want to go to many authority. I just want to mention about the authority, which is responsible for the type design, responsible for the type certificate, responsible, responsible for the approval of the products, for Boeing aircraft is Federal Aviation Administration for European products like the Airbus is, is ESA, European Aviation Safety Agency. So this authority, authority you need you need to deal with in terms of the aircraft design. So anything you want to, they will not really respond to you, they will respond to the OEM, but OEM has to go and talk to them. For example, any design that they come out to you, they have a record sent to the the authority. So that's why a CA is very confident, more confident if you have the OEM approval, because OEM approval should be approved by their 
authority. So that is why most of the time she will ask whether OEM has endorsed the repair. Once the repair is endorsed, the repair is approved, meaning that their authority has approved it. So more assurance the repair is good. Okay, so this is example releases as, as you completed the repair, the mechanics complete the repair and this is not your and the MRO will sign off uh, the work as using the authorized, authorized research and they will notify the repair has been designed, has been embodied to the EO, EO or whatever information that you give to the mechanics. So the, your information, your design will be quoted somewhere in this document and that's why you are still liable for it because whatever they did on the, the aircraft, they did on the repair, how they embody in the, in the repair, how embody the, how they embody the repair will be traced back to your design. Okay, any more questions? Prof, yes. what do you mean by endorse the repair? Okay, endorse the repair mean if you send up, if you ask the OEM for the repair, okay, it's two. First, you ask for the repair. They will come up with everything, okay? If you have small organization, you're only one person engineer, you are responsible to be doing the technical services, but are not able to do the design, the repair. You do not have the capability and capacity because you're small. Then you just give all the report to OEM. OEM will come back to you with the repair. Okay, they come back with you the repair, but this take time. Airline cannot afford this because it take two, three days or five days, depending. Also depending on some how much, um, how is how far you pay them. So that is. They do the repair. They give you the repair. When they did the repair, means that the authority has approved them because they work within their approval. Okay. Second, if you you are airline, uh, you have the capability, you have the people, you have the experience. You design the repair. You send to OEM. Okay. You send to OEM. Sometimes, if they want to take the responsibility they will approve the repair. Okay. But sometimes they feel like they do not have time to review the detail and they do not want to get the authority involved in the repair. They just say the repair is acceptable. Acceptable to them, but they, they don't use word approve. So that is another word I can say endorse. It can be a different term, but that is a situation. Whatever you want to call different name is possible. It's, it's up to you. But that is a situation. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Any more questions? Okay. If not, then we can stop here. Uh, if I want to throw in a few questions for quizzes, I will let you know through the WhatsApp group. So if you have any question in the next uh, session, uh, please uh, ask. Uh, you can ask before. It's possible. You can text me. I can see if you are very excited to ask for the question. You can just message me whatever question you have in mind. Uh, be mindful. This is very. This is a time you can mind my my experience, my exposure with industry because this is your future. This course is unique because this course is be designed for you to work with the airlines as technical service engineer structure or to work with the, any industry which is designing aircraft structure or structure modification. Okay, that's why I explained to you about the, uh, the authority, about the design requirement, about the process of doing the repair. Before I will do this before we really go deep into doing the analysis. When I will go deep into the analysis, I will still follow the structure repair manual. I don't use textbook because I do not want you to get confused from the methodology and textbook and methodology and the structure repair manual. I not, I'm not saying it's totally different engineering, no. Approach is a bit different. Yeah. The approach using the manual, the approach using the textbook is different. Approach using the manual is to get the repair to be approved by the authority. 
approach using the textbook is to understand the detail engineering of how things been done. Okay, so uh, we can end the session and uh, anything you let me know, you message me and have a good day, have a good uh, rest of the week and thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Assalamualaikum, sir. Yes. Uh, pasal attendant. Pagi tadi hmm. saya tak ambil attendant lagi. Internet uh, saya siapa? problem. Uh, siapa ni? Muhammad Khairul 6BME1. Muhammad Khairul 6BME1. Oh, error. Uh, 6BME1. Oh. You message me later. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Something, some error here. Okay, so All anyone, right, sir, thank anything you. else? Yeah, anything? Anyone else? No? Okay, so thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.